this one gonna be good. My name is Mike Musto. Each week I travel the country with the goal of showcasing the best and baddest muscle cars and hot rods around. Every car has a past and every owner a story. Welcome to the world of Big Muscle. Growing up in New Zealand, I had a, a, just a, a very big passion for American cars. Uh, it was very difficult to get American cars in New Zealand at the time. And once I, you know, of course I got to the US and my passion just grew and grew and I just happened to like everything. I just like them all. I like exotic cars uh, and I like hot rods. I like the 60s, uh, 70s. Uh, I've got, I even got a 60 Cadillac that's in the paint shop right now. And, I just sort of got turned on to those, and I, I think they're awesome too, you know. Uh, it's kind of hard to pick any one. I like all the Ford, Mopar, Chevrolet, they're, they're, everyone's got its own points. Actually, I'm not an engineer, I'm actually a telecommunications guy, but I grew up, uh, growing up in New Zealand, I uh, had a lot to do with hot rods. I, was, I actually belonged to the Marineland Street Rod and Custom Club when I was a kid. I built drag bikes, I built choppers, I built hot rods and I've just always, always had a passion for anything that moves, makes a noise, I like it. <laughs> okay, well, every year I've been going to the Viva Las Vegas, as you know, it's a big rat rod convention, and uh, so I figured one of these days, I wanna, next time I go, I wanna have something different that nobody else has got. So that's where the idea came up to build a car that had uh, two engines, and uh, so that's where I started. I got the body, I got the engines, and uh, built it from there. I do get questioned whether both engines are actually running and now of course I'm getting questions well do all the superchargers work so I'm quite often correcting everybody and uh, letting them know yes everything works everything works I, went, I decided to go with the engines side by side uh, because a number of people have done it with the engines in line and the visual effect of that is the wheelbase is too long so now you have a, a hot rod or a you know, car that's just kind of not proportioned and getting a, you know, driving it is not going to be the greatest thing in the world. So I thought, well, if I go side by side, then I can get back to a realistic wheelbase. Side by side is nothing new. Back in the 50s and the 60s drag racing, they actually did a lot of it. And I just figured, well, I can, if they can do it, I can do it. So what I did is I, having the two engines side by side, if you can think of a big triangle. So the engines have uh, cogs on them and then 
Down the bottom is a jack shaft. And that also has a cog on it, supported by two uh, massive bearings. And uh, on the back of that is a flange. And then, and it's just after that, it's a regular bell housing, torque converter, transmission, everything just bolts up and the belt just runs around everything with a idler in the middle to take up the tension. They are actually Hemi's, they're a uh, uh, Ford 4.6 period 96 to 2000. Uh, they're only 281 cubic inch, they're all aluminum, they're uh, six bolt mains, they will actually RPM to about 7000. They're all aluminum, they have four valves, double overhead cam, uh, I actually did away with all the electronics that came with the engine and re retrofitted 1939 Ford Flathead mag pickup distributors, uh, mainly because it just made a lot of sense to make it easier and kind of old school. And then of course, as you know, the, the superchargers, the manifold, the carburetors is once again old school. So what we have now is uh, late model, state of the art engines, but with some of the old school running gear on them. Gordon has managed to sort out many of the things that make older cars difficult to live with. The ride height, for instance, is set so that you never have to worry about road imperfections and or minor inclines. The four carburetors were tuned to perfection, which meant spot on acceleration and easy cruising. Then there were the car's actual road manners, which probably came as the biggest surprise. From the alignment and the brakes to the ride quality and handling, this car was not just a showpiece, but a 100% road-worthy hot rod that has the capacity to be driven anywhere at any time. So badass! I feel like it's just testosterone epitomized. Seriously, if you don't have a penis and you want one, drive this car, you'll grow one within a quarter mile. Like I said, I have two now. Amazing. Such a good, good car. Woo! Everybody just stops and they look. And you guys can see I'm driving this thing. And it's it's actually, it's so easy to drive. I mean, this is usually my height and image being, like I said in the beginning, it did. But now I'm sitting on a box. I can see over everything. And it's glorious. So much fun. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I got into an accident and crashed, I'd be dead. But who cares? It's worth it. I got to tell this guy behind me to turn around. It's ridiculous, isn't it? I have no, it's got 1,200 horsepower. I am so frightened to push the gas down. Just because I didn't, it's totally hand built, front to back. It's the most insane thing I've ever seen. Later, guys. Like I said, everybody loves it. Everybody loves it. <laughs> I get a, a, all, I get, very often get asked, uh, how fast does the car go? How much power does it have? What does it, does it do in the quarter mile? And to be really, really honest, I really don't really want to find out. Uh, right now, it makes so much power, it, it does not get any traction whatsoever. So at 30, 40, 50 mile an hour, if you hit the throttle, it'll just light the tires up and go sideways. So there's really no point. And that's why we have a Lamborghini Diablo. If I want to go 200 mile an hour, I, I take the Lamborghini out. <laughs> <laughs> Even in 110 degree weather with the sun down, oh my god, I would do this all day. So good. I feel like I got a hair dryer blowing in my face. My voice is going completely hoarse. It's worth every hot, sweaty, dirty second. And I would do it again tomorrow. Guys, this is a hot rod. This is like, if there's a guy out there that thinks they can swap this, go ahead. LS1, LS2, two superchargers, one turbo, three turbos. Man, you better start pulling stuff out of your nether regions because if you plan to build something better than this that's fully functional, drivable, turnkey, no problems like Ford did, man, you got your work cut out for you. This car, woo! I love this. I'm gonna take it home. <laughs> it's so good. Oh man. I don't know what we're gonna do next season on Big Muscle, but holy hell, if we're gonna have to try it really, really hard.
top this year. Woo! Unbelievable, people. You know, a lot of magazines look at this thing and they look at it and they're like, ah, it's too pompous, it's too this. You guys are idiots. How stupid can you be not to take notice of a car like this and want to drive it and show it to people and experience what a super creative, die-hard car guy imagination can do. This is what it does. Oh, man. What a day. What a day. Oh. Love it, love it, love it. Woo. Now, and of course, the car actually is, a, is just a killer everywhere it goes. It's obviously the only one of its kind. I know there's not going to be another one like it. And for the most people, it, they love to see it just because it is different. And it, I really get a kick out of making everybody happy who's looking at it. And I get a, a lot, a lot of extremely nice compliments, great engineering. And the, and the biggest one I actually get is uh, when I do take it to a show is these guys will come up and say, hey, thanks very much for bringing it out for us to look at. This is really cool. And I think that's worth, you know, it's, it makes it worth it. It's just so neat that uh, everybody appreciates the car. And uh, it's just a fun deal. Well, now that I've built the twin engine hot rod, it's pretty tough to go backwards. So I figure the only way to go is still keep going forward. So my next project that I'm sort of in the midst of building and just to give you an idea, it's a multi-engine motorcycle. And in itself, that in itself is going to be quite an engineering achievement, maybe even more so than Double Trouble. So uh, look out, because uh, you'll have to wait and see it. <laughs> the muscle car hobby, as most of you guys know, is pretty fickle. A lot of times you'll go to a car show and you'll hear people talking. You'll hear people kind of cutting down other people's cars. They'll say things like, oh, I don't like the paint on this, or I don't understand why he wired this like that, or oh my God, those wheels are disgusting. You know, everybody's got a comment. And after a while, it gets old and it gets annoying. You know, we look at cars like Gordon's Double Trouble Hot Rod. The thing is a masterpiece of backyard engineering, ingenuity, and vision. And you know, amazing is, is a relative term, but this car truly was. We drove this car in 103 degree heat in the desert in Henderson, Nevada. Now, I can't run my Charger in 103 heat in the desert in Henderson, Nevada without this thing overheating, but yet this car did it with two engines, four blowers, four carburetors, transmission that worked, everything worked as it should. So guys, look at this hot rod, take your inspiration, know that we had an amazing time with it. And um, thank you for this season of Big Muscle. Thank you for the comments, thank you for the inspiration and thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next season. So next season for Big Muscle, we're thinking about doing something a little bit different. We're thinking about maybe doing like a road trip style show where we go back and forth different things and, and as you can tell, people are starting to get a little bit of excitement in their loins. Now, Zach is probably one of the most excited because he's been wanting to do a road trip forever. Thaddeus is really excited too, but he's the guy behind the camera that always makes us like look good and you know brings us all this stuff. And it's starting to get to the point where I might have to start talking to him for the simple fact that we need that thing, that thing, to do what we needed to do to get us from point A to point B to point C. This is what I have to deal with every time we shoot. I have to deal with an adolescent, I have to deal with a man with huge well, a huge man with big tattoos, so I can't really say anything bad about him. And I don't know. I don't know what next season is going to be like. All I know is we're going to be on the road in a big fat station wagon, and it should be a hell of a lot of fun. God help us all.